Welcome back. In this lesson, I'm going to be walking you through how to set up an AKS cluster. Let's check it out. I'm logged into my Azure portal now. I'm going to come to the search box and type in Azure Kubernetes Services. Give it a click. And I'm going to go ahead and create a Kubernetes cluster. So the first thing you will need to do as always is to choose a valid subscription. So I have one here. And next, let's create a resource group for this purpose. So I'm going to call this AKS cluster. Next is for us to choose cluster preset configuration. AKS preset configuration is like a predefined template or setting for creating or setting up an Azure Kubernetes service cluster. It's a way of quickly and easily creating a Kubernetes cluster in Azure with specific settings. You will notice that there are different templates to choose from here. So in this example, let's go with standard. Next, we have the name of our cluster. How about we call this my cluster one. Be sure to choose a region closest to you. So I'll leave that at the default in this example. Next is the availability zone. Availability zone helps you spread your application out across multiple physical places in the Azure data center, just in case there's a problem, a problem like a power outage in one of the zones. For AKS pricing tier, we we'll maintain standard. And for the version I'm going to keep to this version, just be sure to choose a version that is stable. So I'll maintain this default as well. And we have this automatic upgrade. This can either be enabled or disabled. When it is enabled, it means that Azure will automatically handles the process of upgrading Kubernetes control plane component for you. So I'll leave that at the default as well. The next tab is our node pool tab. The node pool is a group of virtual machines that are used to run your containerized applications. As you can see, there is a default node pool that has been created for me. But if I want, I can make adjustments to this node pool. So let's give it a click. So we're able to change the node pool name. You can choose between Windows and Linux operating system. And here you are able to scale up and down at the node size. For example, if you need your node for mission critical applications, so you might want to come here and adjust the size of your nodes accordingly. And for the scale method, we have it default to auto scale. And this means that our cluster can add additional nodes when and if required. The minimum node count is two uh, in this example, and the maximum node count is five. So I'm going to cancel out of here and proceed to the next tab, which is the networking tab. From here, we're able to enable private or public access. Private access, by the way, allows you to control whether your AKS cluster can communicate with Azure services over a private network connection, as opposed to a public internet connection. If I scroll down a little, you will see you have your DNX name prefix and a network policy. I'm going to click next, which takes us to the integration tab. You know, AKS provides built-in integration with many Azure services that enables developers and administrators to leverage the power of the services to enhance their containerized applications and to also manage the Kubernetes environment more efficiently. For example, here we have the container registry. The container registry is where you have all of your images. So I can choose to create a container registry if I want my AKS cluster to pick my images from a private registry. So we don't need to do that in this example. And if we scroll down just a little bit, uh, you will notice that we're able to also enable monitoring. It's important to note here that once monitoring is enabled, your monitored log will be stored inside the log analytics. All right, so I guess this does it for us. We have the advanced tab and we have our tagging. 
and I'm not interested in tagging at this time. So I'm going to go ahead and review. All right, everything looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the create button. All right, our cluster has been created. So we can click on go to resource. Now that we've created our cluster, we're able to see things like the namespace. When we click on the namespace, uh, we're able to view the node pool. Remember we created just one node pool and that uh, the node pool at the moment is running two nodes. And the operating system that each of the nodes is running is Linux operating system. What I would like us to do next is to connect to this cluster. In order for us to connect to the cluster, we need to have Azure PowerShell on our system, or we can simply make use of the cloud shell. So I'll click on the cloud shell here. And sure, I can choose between Bash Shell and PowerShell. So let's go ahead now and click on connect. So for us to connect, I'm just going to copy and paste this command here. Now from here, we're able to use our kubectl command. So I've just cleared my screen now. For example, let's attempt to get all the namespaces that we have on our cluster. So that would be typing kubectl get namespace, get ns. And you're able to see all the namespaces that we have, just like we can also see the same thing here. If we go back to overview and click on connect once again, so you can see some other sample commands here that you can try out on your own. All right. In this lesson, you've learned how to set up an AKS cluster. Thank you. And I'll see you in the next lesson.